day dear learners welcome to today's history class i hope you are all doing fine our topic for today is the ovambo people's organization to understand the ovambo people's organization and its aim we must understand its background how it was founded when it was founded and so on it was founded in 1975 by andimba toivo ya i hope you remember who andimba toivo ya toivo is we spoke about him in our last class that uh, had the topic Namibian nationalism. And we remember about his contribution to the Namibian independence and Namibian nationalism. Remember that uh, the Ovambo People's Organization was one of his contribution as well. So it was formed by him in 30 to 40, we really don't know the number, Southwest African students, Namibian students, and workers who worked and lived in Cape Town at that time. And at that time, it was called the Ovambo's Pe Ovamboland People's Congress, the OPC. Remember that all these 30 to 40 members were nationalists and they were fighting for our country's freedom. A few years later in Namibia, Toivo Ya Toivo joined Sam Nuyoma, Fanwell K, sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that name, and Andreas Shipanga. These were the big four, the main leaders of the OPC. In 1958, it got its name Ovambo People's Organization. Now you might ask, why Ovambo People's Organization? Why not still Ovambo People's Congress? This is simply because Congress, if you look up the meaning, uh, the meaning of it, is a meeting or a conference of representatives. But an organization is broad. We, are, we can talk about it in terms of being national or even international. And they thought of it being an organization for the sole purpose of it uniting other Namibians as well in Namibia and all around the world and for it to become an, a national and international movement, not just a simple meeting. So that's why they changed it from Congress to organization. Now let's look at a few aims of the OPO. The OPO's aims were to improve the life and conditions of the contract workers. We spoke a little bit about, uh, we will speak a little bit about this in, in further lessons. To remove racial discrimination in Namibia, remember at that time Na Namibians were under segregation. To bring Namibia under the direct protection of the UN. We also spoke a little bit about the UN's contribution to Namibian nationalism. So their aim was to get help from the UN. Changing of name from Congress to organization which future purpose, as I already mentioned, was to act as a liberation struggle movement. Not just a meeting of representatives, but a, a, a movement. Something that will change certain aspects of, uh, of the lifestyle they had at that time. And the very, the very much important one, the most important one was, was the independence of Namibia. They developed and spread quickly. However, they were criticized by the name, giving the perception that it only protected the rights for the Ovambo people. Yes, the name was a, a little bit deceiving. Why call it Ovambo Land People Organization? Now if Miss Luango is a Himba, does it mean that she cannot join? She cannot participate? Or what now? Or when it comes to... Miss Longo's husband being a member of or a contract worker, did, does it mean you guys will not protect his rights because he is Himba as well? So that really messed up the minds of many people at that time, and that's why they were criticized, criticized by it. But it did not mean that it brought them down. They continued to flourish and really helped in Namibia's independence. Now let's look at one of their members, their lead members, which was our, our Sam Nuyoma, our first president. 
In April 1959, Nuyoma was elected president of the OPO. Nuyoma was known because of his early political activities, making him to lose his job in the railways. Now just look at how wicked the South Africans and Germans were. They didn't only let him go, like he didn't only lose his job at the railways, but he was blacklisted from any employment. When you are blacklisted, this means that you cannot get a job anyway. Any company you go to, if your name is on blacklist, you can try. They will not give you a job, even if it means just washing the dishes or watering the plants. They will not give you a job. And he was blacklisted because he was trying to fight for Namibian freedom. And he was also trying to fight for the freedom of his uh, fellow contract workers and fellow Southwest Africans that were struggling in South Africa and were living in very harsh conditions. Because of this, they blacklisted him. So being stressed and having a lot of energy, but not even being unable to find a job, he said, you know what? Instead of me just sitting at home, stressing myself, getting depressed, let me put my energy and my full commitment into what we are doing. So he put his time and full involvement in the OPO, making the lives of the contract workers better in, in his country. He didn't only do that. He also organized meetings in townships and compounds. He and the OPO worked closely with the Herero's chief council. Remember, we talked about in, uh, this in the last class, Hosea's Kutako uh, movement in the Swanu. Branches were also opened in Valves Bay, Chumep, Kedmans, and other places. We have a picture of our former president, Sam Nuyoma, as a young man. And next to it, it says Sam Nuyoma left Southwest Africa in March 1960. When he tried to come back in 1966, he was arrested and deported the next day. Imagine, you are coming to your own country. Coming to your own country, imagine your birth uh, country. You, you have a birthright of being a Namibian and being in this country. But then you are deported, something that shouldn't have happened. But had, it had happened to him. Only 23 years later, he could return. And after those 23 years later, he then became the first president of the Republic of Namibia. What a story, isn't it? I hope you enjoyed today's class. Looking forward to our next one.